So uh, I suppose you'd like to hear from the beginning, how we all got going here. Uh, back in 1950, this all what used to be a bushland, and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, migrants wanted to get out of Brighton camp desperately because things weren't too, uh, too good there. So they all bought blocks of land here in West, or oh, it was called Springfield then, 150 pounds each. Uh, there was no road, no water, no power. And all we done was uh, cleared enough of the uh, tea tree type of bush here to put up a shack. And all the material that we had, the timber, uh, the boards, and that was all carried, dragged up from where the main road is now. We used to drag the timber up from there and the boards on our backs up to here. And then there was two families of, of us moved up here once we got the shack up. There was no doors, no windows at the time. Sort of everybody helped one another here. Everyone, wherever they, uh, our community, our Lithuanian community got the... Uh, you see that they're all pitching and they all done so many days. You record of how many days you helped somewhere. Then when they was ready to build, you go and help them out. You do so many days for them or whatever. Well, just out the back here, this is uh, the shed we used to use for uh, for bathing and uh, laundry and all that. Dad was only a little person, Mum and Dad, so uh, all the doorways weren't too big. And the uh, same thing here. And on the corner here, you can't tell now, but it used to be a, a toilet. They used to have to come and take the bucket away. <laughs> a few times the, uh, the ladies got caught. This wasn't overgrown like it is now, there used to be an entrance to it. And uh, yeah, you can sort of, instead of uh, having the uh, um, sump oil now, we gave it a coat of paint, but that's starting to go a bit. And as you can see inside here at the moment now, it's uh, not like it used to be. How about the plumbing? Uh, well, th there's none here. <laughs> <laughs> that come in from the kitchen, from, from the house, when I put the new kitchen over there, we dragged it into here. But before, we just used to have a, uh, a bucket. Well, we did have a, a smaller sink sink here for a while, and uh, we used to have a bucket. I used to wash it up, let it out, and uh, just outside the back door here, we used to have a water tank. all from the weather and the water tank used to be just here big water big um, um, iron galvanized iron water tank the water brigade used to be every evening uh, we used to carry it up by buckets from roughly about the first avenue now there was uh, Baynaris, uh was uh, there before us before we come up there and there used to be a tap there so we used to carry it by buckets and we had, I still got the uh, big aluminium drum down below where we used to fill that up and we used to use that for, for cooking and so forth. Used to be our uh, bathroom and uh, laundry and just outside, outside the door here in this area we used to have a 44 gallon drum and uh, with the top cut out and had the uh, copper, still got the copper uh, up there. And here used to be a, a ritual once a week. Used to stoke up the copper. And uh, I did have the uh, uh, big iron bath. There was a big bath here. Used to fill that up. And we all used to have a bath in it once a week. Which, that was it. <laughs> Pommy ritual. <laughs> bath once a week because you just couldn't do it any other time. You know, we had no trees, no part, no hut. And because it didn't ever have a name, I thought, you know, let's have a name for it. So I've submitted Kuinda, which meant happy place. Because I like happy things, not grub bums on things, you know. Love that. So we got it named Kuinda, and I got them to put 
in brackets, happy place to let people know that if they were coming there, it was to have happy times. And then we did, asked about a hut, and they were going to put just a single one. But we thought, no, it would be better to have a double hut where more people could come. And then the council gave $1,000 to the Youth Task Force to do a mural up in the ceiling of it. So it's very special to us all around here. And that's mainly come out of the precinct, West Moona precinct, that we've been involved with ever since it began. Hmm. And do you have barbecues there? Yes, start? we always have one uh, in April and in November for Armistice Day. And we could have 60 come, we could have 30, but we just bring things and have it. Yes. But I'm sure some people, you know, all kinds of things go on in that park. <laughs> yes, all kinds of things. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, we've had some interesting times here, Bernard. When, uh... I have. <laughs> yes. Uh, you better not put this on tape. You know, it's right, a bit of a love nest sometimes. And we've had uh, some girls try and burn it, you know, put... Uh, things on it and tried to burn the grass. We've had a lot of damage done to the hut, but we've always changed it around for love. And at one precinct meeting, they decided to move that slide up to Telosa Park because of the graffiti on it. And uh, I wasn't very popular for saying, well, I've never seen a child break their arm on graffiti yet and we want it back, thank you very much. And it cost the council 6000 to put it back. But it had to come back because the people here raised 10000 to put it there. So it's back. Now it's got some more graffiti on it. With love. You Never had sewerage though. No. The old pan job she was. And I had mine right down the back and Mar <laughs> yeah. Marge was there when she was having the first child and blew over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When we moved in, the roads were sealed, but there were no paths, just gravel. I know when my children started school, but my daughter, she started uh, St. Teresa's school, and they were making paths, and now I remember the dust. It was just a cloud of dust. And how many times she came back home, halfway back to, you know, instead of going to school down the hill through Amy Street, she came back because she was afraid of that cloud of dust. Some people say Springfield is called Little Poland. Yeah. <laughs> Polville. 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 That's it, Polville. Didn't understand the uh, significance of the of, of the words by Polville, for instance. They wouldn't know what, what that meant, uh, what that meant. But we we sort of because we went to school, and the more we, the longer we went to school, the more we understood. We started understanding the the meaning of things. Once I came home with my black eye, with both my, I was assaulted by three four four boys. We went to a swimming carnival, and I was like this. <coughs> But uh, I, I got those blokes back one by one. So, but I never complained. Yeah, you just bought it. You just went, went and did it. You didn't go crying home to mum. I didn't go crying home to mum. I've never, I've never gone crying home to her. My mother would only come here on a Tuesday. That was the day they'd come and collect the can. She didn't like coming out here any other day. No. Mm. And I mean, if you had a party or any, a lot of visitors, you had to dig it in the garden because they only came once a week. Can was the can that we had the little outhouse down the back in the garden and they had a little trap door at the back and they used to push the can in under the seat. That was the can. Once a week they would come and collect the can, you see, and uh, of course it was uh, in winter time, uh, uh, not was muddy and uh, smelly and noisy as well. It was not really hygienic, you see, to, to dispose of sewage in that way. 
and the Glenorchy Council built a beautiful council chambers there before. They just had a single story uh, uh, Glenorchy Community uh, Centre there. And uh, also they spent money on sports over. I'm a sporting person, but you know, sewage is it was published in the paper that the people in Springfield didn't deserve sewerage and I was really outraged about that. I thought, goodness, you know, why don't we deserve sewerage? We're not animals. Um, you know, people were upset just like I was, you know. They'd, some of the people had lived here since the 50s. I mean, we came 60. They'd already put up with it, you know, like 10 years before we came. They had to, you know, put up with the conditions here and uh, to have that written in the paper, I just thought it was disgraceful, really. So I thought, golly, you know, that that's not fair. We've been here all those years, paying our rates and getting nothing, virtually nothing for it. So I was so enraged that I went around door knocking and asking people if they'd come down to the council and demonstrate that we do deserve sewerage, like everybody else, we know different. <laughs> So I went around door knocking and had quite a good response to the council and demonstrate that we do deserve sewerage like everybody else, we know different. <laughs> so I went around door knocking and had quite a good response and um, we arrived down there with all our placards. A lady here in Springfield made quite a few nice um, placards. She had like sweet, sweeten up Springfield and she had all geraniums in them. And then she's had um, a flower in your hair and a peg on your nose. <laughs> I don't know whether I should say the ditty that I was going to put, but I didn't do it. <laughs> I, because Glenorchy had just become a city. And I said, um, well, this is what I was going to write. Um, they call us a city, which I think's a pity, because we have to live here amongst all the... <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't brave enough to do that. <laughs> so we, I think we had the sign Sweden up Springfield. <laughs> and um, we marched down to the Glen Orkey Council and they, they didn't know we were coming. It was all a surprise to them. We tapped on their windows and held our banners up high. And then... Um, was a deputation wasn't there to go? Was it the Lord Mayor you went to see? Did you go and see him? Oh, uh, all of them I think yeah, it was. you went and saw him and yeah. told him about our grievances. And not long after that, you know, we were we had the sewerage on. One so. of the signs was uh, ban the can. Oh yes, she had done the blouse. Time there was ban uh, the bomb. Ban the bomb was popular. And one lady come up with the thing, you know, band. She had it on a blouse on the... Who is this highly? <laughs> we did not really... Uh, well, we didn't bother to find out, but... Uh, it doesn't matter really who it was, you know, because it uh, uh, just... Uh, somebody oh, in, in the council said... Uh, that we didn't deserve sewage, and I might assign all citizens deserve sewage. Many, many good memories in, in this old shack. There used to be parties galore, and uh, used to be always a mob. We used to go out, uh, go up to Launceston, uh, two or three car loads full. We used to go up to eel fishing. Uh, I think I still got some of those about some of the photos where we got the. Uh, off the Launceston Wharf. Uh, we used to catch about three, two or three sugar bag full of wheels, uh, fish all night, all day, all night, come back the next day. While the men folk used to have a bit of a snooze, uh, the ladies used to get together and they used to clean the eels, get them ready, and then we used to go up to Mr. Simonovskas, which is next street up, and they had a smokehouse rigged up. And they used to smoke the eels and then used to bundle them up and used to go around different uh, friends and used to have eels and vodka. 
It used to be good times them days. There was no charge. All that effort you put in, it was all went out for nothing. Where'd you get the vodka? Oh, I used to buy that. Um, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> a couple of them did have a go here in the early days to brew it themselves. Uh, but they soon give it away when they found out they're not allowed to. But, uh, yeah. That's another story that goes back from the early, early days. Uh, this is going back to, to Germany in the camps. Uh, I was only nine at the time, nine to ten. Uh, and they used to brew their own at that time to, to sell uh, to the Yankee soldiers. It used to go pretty well. And uh, I couldn't stand the smell of any alcohol in here for quite a few years because I got drunk on the fumes filling the bottles. <laughs> from the stool. we still got that uh, that aluminium drum that we used to use here for water and that it used to be used for the manufacture of uh, the alcohol in Germany. Water storage, you used to fill it up with, uh, with water, that was our bucket brigade every every evening to fill it up and use it for, for that. Uh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a good quite a good tub. So yeah, it's uh, still have a bit of a chuckle about that at times. And as I said, I couldn't stand the smell of uh, grog. I couldn't uh, had a job to walk past the mustard pot in Myrna. The smell I used to have to hold my breath and run past it. I just couldn't take it. The people from out here, they'd come along. This road wasn't done then. It was like that sort of business. And one night. <laughs> I parked in there and this bloke come down, he come up that way and down, see, and because he didn't know how to end it, next thing he got a slide and he's big, oh, the rut's that deep, and he's in his knife, must Sweet. be going out or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I went up and I put my gum boots on, I went up and I, was, I said, you're not going to get out of there without a pool, mate. So I backed my, I backed my car up to nearly the corner, he was up there. <laughs> And I, my, I was only a little Morris. I, it was too big for me to pull, so chappy around the corner. He had a big car, a friend of mine, and he come right. I was put my hand up, and I said, "Would you help pull him out?" And we got him out. We pulled him out, and I said, "Now take it. Just let it go easy down around the corner," which he did. Well, he was that blooming pleased. He wanted to pay us. He wanted everything to go. I said, "You'll know what to do next time." Yeah, but oh yeah. That was, you couldn't walk, well, when you're walking up here, you're slipping and sliding everywhere. And uh, even I ended up getting an old car, it was old 1938 Plymouth. And they just started putting the roads up past the quarry here in First Avenue. Uh, I just filled the tank up in it, and coming home there, I ran out about halfway up 7th Avenue. I wondered why, I just filled the tank. You know, me and Dad was in it, and uh, got out, and I looked underneath the car, and I thought, geez, tank's missing. <laughs> so I went back down around where uh, Zilberts is now, in the, the quarry, then a uh, building inside of that. My tank was laying in the middle of the road there. <laughs> Didn't even spill any petrol out of it. So we had to pick it up, me and Dad, and walked, brought it back up to uh, number, it's number seven there now, anyway, as well in 7th Avenue. That's where the car conked out and uh, used to be always breaking down on me. He had more wire holding it together than anything else. So, yeah, <laughs> bit of a chuckle about that occasionally. And the Springfield people said all along they didn't mind paying a fair amount for the roads because they accepted that the roads was their responsibility. But they complained that the works were excessive, and I don't think there's any doubt that they were. Now that wall in Springfield in 2nd um, Avenue, a competent engineer said later that the, what they should have done was acquire the blocks on the lower side and turn that into a, into a park, and you'd only have one level, a single level road. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a good engineer at the time. They, they didn't have any engineers. But for a time, the council was without engineers.
Well, why didn't they do that? Why did they build a great Because they had 400,000 pounds. No one was supervising it. The engineers went to town. I had come in, she had money, exactly for me, 40 years. 40, she was 40 years when she arrived in Tasmania. True. Yes, 40, 40 years. So now she's yeah. 99. <laughs> Do you remember building your house? I remember that my father was going to build a house. Oh, no, Of course. She said, I helped too. How? Yuck. 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 Tato. Tato, so father. That's her husband. Tato. She, she'll no. call him Tato like. Everything about this. Very, very good carpenter. Can I ask about your garden? Vin Koche Petachove. Nahorod male, shove nahorod male. Who said? She had everything, no shop. Kaji. Kartopio. Uh, tomato, um, potato. Buraki. Uh, beetroot. Cebulla. Cebulla. Onion, onions. Chutsnik. Uh, garlic. Morqua. 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 Yeah, carrots. You know the night cart. Ah, we promised that if we put a team, we would warn you to hunt the male. We promised that if we saw what happened, what 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 Не забирали. Хранили в уборі. Іде на город тоді все. The night, night cart, uh, mum tried to save, save it and most of it went on to our garden. It was, yeah, because that's the best, yeah, that's what happened with it. And then, yeah, very, very little of it was, was taken away. I got thrown out before I was elected with another group who went it because we, we had the road down here that the council wouldn't take over. Brent Street. Yeah, there's a quarry up behind here and um, there was an explosion and it was a pretty powerful explosion. I don't know what the, what the background of it was but the fire brigade tried to get up and they ended up in, the, in a ditch, just before you get to the Springfield School. Well, we'd been arguing with the council to get this road fixed up, and they said, well, you'll have to pay. Well, another chap, Alan Burnt and myself, did a bit of fishing around, and we got wind from an old resident that this section of the road had been made. He said, I worked on it as a 16-year-old. He said, no, he said, that was made by the Public Works Department. So we just got our heads together and we said, right, look, it was done by the Public Works Department. There must be a record of it somewhere. So we went into the um, archives and we started digging up Public Works Department um, execution acts. And sure enough, there was a sec um, the details of the construction of... Hill Street, it was called then. So we took this into the council, and the council sent an engineer up who confirmed, yes, I'm afraid it is. So we said, right, oh, well, we've got proof that this was a constructed road. And the council started to get, saying, oh, no, well, we don't have to do it. We'll do it when we get around to it, sort of thing. So we said, well, this is urgent. Here we've got a case that even the, the fire department couldn't get through. What happens? We're, we're not protected. <clears throat> we threw, and then we added that in the, with the problem of 
and we got the health inspector up there and showed him where sewerage um, septic tank effluent was running along this same road and um, he admitted yes yes it's not that's not good not good it's not shouldn't be happening so with all these things we went to the council and we kept getting fobbed off so on one night we knew that it was going to come up the question of Elliot Road so we all we had about 20 of us arrived at the council and uh, one chap got himself to the back of the group and kept heckling a bit of a stir it <laughs> he kept heckling and the end up um, Terry Martin left the meeting he had to go to something else so Ray Wright was the deputy mayor and he was and he finally got sick of it. He said, clear the gallery. <laughs> they chucked us all out. 57. Most Australians came home to a warm house and a cold beer, maybe even a TV. The basic services of water on tap, the heat that obeys you, streets, gutters, a shop, a flush toilet. These things they took for granted. But in Springfield, they had none. Ted Christie lived in Springfield and he started this scrapbook to tell the story of Springfield's long struggle to achieve what most other Australians took for granted. In this interview, Ted tells the story behind the story of his scrapbook. When you look at it, it was a mud heap. They're talking so about it. Horrible. Don't you? It made the, made the area, you know. Yeah. It uh, was terrible. That isn't a road, dear. That's how it was. That is the truth. People wouldn't deliver the mail. It was too sloppy, you see. You, you look at that and they had a poor bush bikes those days. And they, they wouldn't do it. So this where it was nice and it wasn't all so much muddy. That's why they put all of these, these people, put their posts up the post. Sixth Avenue and Viewpoint Road here. Mm. They had a bit of gravel on it. And when I used to go out, I had a car, and I'd go down that way, and Fourth uh, Avenue. Mm. That was nothing much, nothing there, and slide down, and then come up Sixth Avenue and slide down into here. But I don't know how Marge ever pushed that pram, you know, from down the bottom. Mm. She she didn't have a car those days. You know, they wouldn't come up here. No. So if the house was burning, she burnt. And as simple as that, and the, and the water was very poor. You know, and that's it, that speaks for itself. You Never had sewerage though. No. The old pan job she was. Who I had mine right down the back. And Marge, oh, yeah. Marge was there when she was having the first child and blew over. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a mess, isn't it, really? And that's what they were talking about with the lot on the, on the universe. A festa. Could you Help for Springfield. Yeah. It uh, was terrible. It didn't have a good name. And of course, a lot of them never had homes, especially the imports. Oh, you know, they used to live in huts. all sorts. They live in, used to live in car boxes. And, I know. And they used to, they called it Wog Town. That's what it was like. Until we got stuck into them about it. They would not have done anything if we hadn't got it started. Through the council. But we took it further, that just show us the money. And when the people got with us, we formed the Springfield Garden Development League. And that's why we got them in. That'd be the uh, Liberals. Oh. We talked about it, and I got a lot of stuff put in the paper. Well, that and that made matter. them, they weren't in power then. And no. that made them Wake look up. at this as a good one to get into the Parliament, you see. Oh, they're all up there saying, Oh, terrible shock, and <laughs> they were going to, thought they were going to take over from the government. That was when Reese, he was in Parliament, you know, he was a Premier. <laughs> One of the blokes at work. I forget what it was about, no roads, if you read it all. <laughs> well, we needed to be like Noah's Ark. Yeah, well, that, 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 <laughs> that's what it is. That's, that's, the, that's the thing of it. But then we got new legislation with a yeah. dove of hope and a little umbrella. <laughs> it's gorgeous, isn't it? Once it got started, we played one against the other. I sat in Legislative Council on the day they brought the thing in. Reese was very uh, dogmatic about it, 
of course, these blokes reckon why we got the loan off the government. And the bloke down, oh, I can't think of his name, uh, he wanted to know in the Legislative Council why we were getting it for three point, I just can't think of the right figure. And Rishi said, if there's any arguments, I'm going to pull it out. And that's how it started. When they got started, all these problems. Now, if you had a place on the corner, which have had more mm. land, we had to pay the same. Everybody paid the same. It didn't matter what you had. And things that went on, they used to, the, the people doing it used to put drives in for people and all that, and still in that money. And everybody was up here that had blocks and all, they still had to pay it. And I know people, they didn't have a drive, but they chucked a bit of stuff down. And of course, if they had to drop it, they had to put the drive in. Well, anyway, see, we had to pay for the roads. I paid half of mine, and over the road, they paid half of it too. And I think it would have been probably about eight or nine hundred dollars or pounds. I hate this page. That's the school. That's the school out the back. This is what the kids used to have to go to school in. Yes. But I just love this one and I think I wonder who did That's that. That's one of the... Be, Alderman? Oh, no, I reckon one of the school kids. It's a pretty big boot, isn't it? Oh, uh, there were some big boys. But that's what they used to have to walk to school in. It's terrible, isn't it, when you think shoes. about it? Well, there's nothing they could do nothing about it. Nothing else. <laughs> you know, there's nothing they could do about it. After a while, we weren't happy about the way they based us out, you know, everybody playing the same. Oh, that name, that was Ross Addison, wasn't it? Look, he's up to the top of his gumboots in mud as he crosses 8th Avenue with a dog yeah, and scrap. He died in the finish, yeah, yeah. he died very young. Well, anyway, I'll get back to it. And that had to be paid back to the government. But uh, we stopped the payments. We got together and we got round the people and we got money off the people mm. and we said we're not paying any more until it's rectified. Good. And we didn't and we went, we, we fought the council mm. 12 years. Yeah? Fair and fight. we won it. Good. Yeah, Good. but we didn't win it because they never took the uh, interest. That kept going. And they were still in the poo. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. All that uh, went for nothing. But it did give us and people a bit of chance to get something together. But it's handy to keep. Now, in 1958, there wouldn't be any more of these around. That tells you, you know, the average people couldn't believe it, that uh, it was like that. Oh, I suppose it's put up with it.